What an amazing season last season. Put Brighton into the top six. And now Roberto De Serbi is set to lose his two best players. McAllister has gone. Caicedo is looking to leave. And I think Brighton are in need of a little bit of a rebuild. So on Sunday, we'll be rebuilding Brighton. But today is time to make De Zerbi's 4-2-3-1, 23-24 tactic ready to use for Sunday's rebuild. What's going on there guys, Kempi here and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video from myself and today is Roberto De Zerbi's 4-2-3-1 overachieving underdog bonanza and it's fantastic and Roberto De Zerbi, you my son, are absolutely fantastic. What a fun manager to do some research into, you know, he's been all over the block, he's been to Ukraine with Shakhtar, he's been in the leagues of Italy, um, he's, you know, flourished as a manager as well since coming to Brighton and I'm very excited today to say that we are remaking De Zerbi's tactics for the first time on the this year's FM and what makes it even more fun is we're doing it for the 23-24 season, so obviously we all know McAllister has left the club, Casado is pretty much out of the door at this point. And it looks like there's a few players that are coming in. So we'll start off with the squad and who I have brought in transfers-wise because I think it's quite a key thing as to how we've sort of played this season. Uh, I brought in Levy Colville uh, on a free transfer from Chelsea. I think a centre-back is sort of a key thing for Brighton. Uh, I think as well is a quite a realistic sign. And there's talks of him in real life for to win. I think once Casado is done, they'll go full balls to the wall on getting Levy Colville from Chelsea. Um, and then there's other signings. I've made Milner and Dahoud on a free transfer. Uh, Mohamed Salisu are brought in from South Hampton, another centre-back, again, kind of linked with him. I've seen it a few bits on, I basically researched Brighton transfers, and he was one of the top players on there. Obviously, just recently relegated with Southampton. A decent, very fast centre-back in Mo Salisu. Uh, and the other person that brought in as well is Rio Hatate, uh, a very, very good midfielder. Uh, I like him a lot, obviously, from Celtic. I see him as quite a, a Brighton signing, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think he sort of fits the bill very well of a Brighton signing. Uh, and then also... Uh, Jao Pedro was here already from the update. So we've already got Jao Pedro in the team, which is awesome as well. Fantastic young center attacking midfielder. Done very well this season with Brighton in the league. 12 goals and 6 assists. And obviously, he feels like he's been around for absolute years. But the kid's 22 years of age and 21 in real life. So that's mind-boggingly good. Uh, but yeah, Jao Pedro is also in, which means the team, when you sort of put it in as a uh, best 11, sort of was looking like this, uh, apart from Jao Pedro, was definitely in the team. Uh, with Sanchez, Lamptey, Webster, Dunk, Estupinian, uh, obviously with Colville and Salisa as the backup centre-backs, Dahoud and Moda in midfield. Now I'd probably put Rio Hatate in there. You've also got Milner. You've also got uh, Billy Gilmore. You've got um, Pascal Gross, Jacob Moldo. You've got players that can play in midfield. You've got Solly March and again I probably have played Julio and CISO but didn't seem he got too much game time this season. Uh, Mitoma on the left, Jao Pedro in cam and Ferguson up top and he is the star man. 48 games a season, 30 goals and 9 assists is fantastic uh, to see. 17 goals, 13 assists coming from Mitoma, 12 and 5 coming from Sonny March, 12 and 6 coming from Jao Pedro, 10 and 3 coming from Welbeck, 16 assists and 6 goals coming from Pascal Gross as well. It was great to see. 7 assists from Ty Lamptey uh, and I cannot see a stupid on here. He only got 3 assists this season to fair and he played half the games. I think Levy Colville played quite a little bit out at left back. He did. He played 17. So not the most progressive left back. Uh, and we'll go through the tactic properly in just a second. But the season this season, I think is a very, very good season, given the fact we have lost our two best players. 74 points in the Premier League. I've seen, you know, teams coming second on that. So just because City on 90, Liverpool on 82, very good seasons, doesn't mean we didn't have a good season ourselves. It would have been enough for top four this season as well. So I think that's quite a key thing to look into. Uh, 74 points, 22 wins, 8 draws, 8 losses, 34 goal difference. Very, very happy with this season in that regard. Uh, Quarter final of the Europa League by Liverpool of all teams. Um, I mean, who ended up losing the final to Atlanta? A classic Liverpool bottle job. Uh, FA Cup, we got knocked out by Manchester City in the fifth round. Again, just a tough draw. And the Carabao Cup, fourth round by Villa, a very, very good side coming seventh. So, you know, not the end of the world, but I think a very, very good overachieving season. You can see we were in the whole season in that top six, other than, a, you know, a fairly wobbly start. But after that, we were in second, third, fourth, fifth, fourth, fifth, fourth, third, fourth, and eventually settled in to that fourth place position position above Arsenal so very very happy uh, with things this season data hub wise 2.03 goals per game scored and 1.13 conceded per game and the Premier League as well in terms of the stats we're looking at uh, 77 goals in third place behind United uh, fewest conceded were in fifth place just 43 which again quite happy with and possession wise in fifth place as well with 55 percent possession so very happy with that I feel like it's a very front-footed aggressive formation and we'll go through it now it's a sweeper keeper on support 
in goal with no further instructions. Tariq Lamptey as a wing back on support with Sit Narawa and Estupinian as wing back on support as well on the left with Sit Narawa. Two ball playing defenders just inside with both with dribble less on. Uh, Dahoud in front as a DM. So I have got the two centre defensive mids rather than the two centre mids. This one is a DLP on defend, no further instructions. And next to him is Segundo Valente on support with dribble less and tackle harder. Out on the right, I've gone with Julio and Ciso inside forward on support, Sit Narawa. On the left, an inverted winger on attack, cross aim centre and tackle harder. The shadow striker in the cam roll, no further instructions. I love the shadow striker, it's fantastic. And the complete forward on attack up front as well as shoot more often and tackle harder. I've got it set as a positive mentality. In possession, it's shorter passing, slightly higher tempo, playing out of defence and overlapping down the left as Brighton do with a stupid Yan. Even though he's sitting narrower, he'll sort of defensively sit narrower and you know eventually go down to the left hand side overlapping that left dm spot and getting around matoma uh, a fairly wide attacking width and be more expressive in transition it's take short kicks it's distribute to center backs and full backs counter and counter press and out of possession it's a high press system pressing as much as possible and preventing the short goal distribution as well i think playing at the back is a real key thing with this Brighton side, it is exactly what I wanted to happen. I have done it with further two tests as well, one with Palermo in the Serie B to show it works at a lower down level and also with Sassuolo. So without further ado, let's go over and check how we got on with Palermo and Sassuolo. Well, if you guys can make sure as well to like the video, subscribe to the channel and follow on all of these four wonderful things as well because it helps me out so, so much. And also thank you to the Patreon members on the screen now. You are absolute legends and I'm so thankful to every single one of you that signed up to the Patreon, every one of you that likes this video, subscribes, you're absolute legends and you genuinely are making a dream come true. This month has been absolutely mental, so thank you so, so much. Palermo, first in the Serie B, predicted to come down in 10th position. And my God, did we dominate. 27 wins, 9 draws, and just 2 losses all season. A 48 goal difference is great. And you can see from the Date Hub, it wasn't like we just battered teams and scored lots of goals. 1.82 goals per game uh, and 0.55 conceded. You know, a very, very impressive defensive tally for this season in the Serie B. You know, quite a difficult league. There's lots of teams in here that are very strong. Spezia, Como, Sampdoria, Palma, uh, Palma Calagari, uh, Pisa, Reginia, I mean, Juventus of the 23s, Venezia have been relegated again. There is some strong, strong sides in Serie B and a lot of competition to put ourselves up against. But we completely and utterly dominated. 69 goals, 11 more than anyone else. 21 conceded, 6 less than anyone else. Possession-wise, on 61% as well, just 1% behind. We had the most shots and we got the most points. And like I say, predicted to come in 10th position. The media at the start put us in 7th and we massively, massively overachieved. Dominating Spezia, who were 1-4 to favourites by 22 points. Now, if that's not impressive and that doesn't deserve a like, what are you guys doing? Make sure you leave a like on this video and also, you know, go and check this tactic out. It's in Sword Out SI and I'd love for you guys to use this and show me what it was like for you guys as well. Lots of goals come from the striker, a few come from the cam as well and all for the wing rolls. That is where you're looking the goals to come from. And Sassuolo as well, a team predicted to come down in 12th place. We have climbed them up into 7th, getting European football next season and also getting to the semi-finals of the Coppa Italia. A very, very good season in uh, cup competitions as well. It's been great to do even better there. Sadly, a minus one goal difference is a little bit frustrating. Uh, looks like we were very good on the goals of 63. However, conceded way too many. I think that's probably down to the poorer defence here at Sassuolo. Just you can see it's a clear, you know, compared to the other teams, it's a bit of an outlier, but 1.68 goals because of a game, way too much. Would have been just a dodgy defence, but scoring lots and lots of goals is great to see. And I mean, regardless, a very, very good season. You know, back into Europe for Sassuolo, nearly winning the Coppa Italia as well is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, we're not obviously at the top of any of these, but being well placed in the goals in joint third, being in seventh place in possession is nice as well. Third most shots. Um, and then fewer shots, we weren't there because defence was absolutely rubbish. But, you know, you can see where I'm coming from. A very, very good underdog tactic. And I hope you guys do enjoy this one. Lots of goals come from Pinamonti. Baraji off the right, showing you can also get results from that. Bajari in the cam roll doing bits as well. Uh, and the left wing roll also doing absolutely fantastic. So that is the Deserby 4 2 3 1, an underdog tactic for your saves as we head in to the summer transfer window. Look forward to the video on Sunday. It's a Brighton rebuild. And tomorrow, the little reschedule has come around due to the massive news from FM. I saw that 
our side a video on Thursday debating all of that. So make sure you're checking over that over there. And the Spurs rebuild will be tomorrow. So make sure you tune in for that one as we look to rebuild Spurs into a powerhouse of English football. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll speak to you next time.